NGE, we were tasked with designing a mode of transportation from the city of San Diego to North Island Naval Air Station. The amount of possibilities to accomplish this objective were endless. We could have done a ferry system, uh, a bridge with a railroad track on it, a bridge for passenger cars, a tunnel, or even a combination of a tunnel and a bridge. And once our team was able to sit down and discuss our options, we were able to narrow it down to three likely possibilities, which were a tunnel, a lift bridge, and a pre-stressed, pre-cast concrete bridge. When we looked into a tunnel, we realized that this was a very expensive alternative. We would have to dam the San Diego Bay for construction, as well as install and maintain ventilation and lighting for it. There are also many safety concerns with this. Since it will be in a place that experiences many earthquakes, we do not want the tunnel to fail. Also, the fact that it leads into a military installation, we would need to be extra cautious of terrorist attacks uh, and things of that nature. So we decided against this option. When we looked into a lift bridge, we found that constructing it would be very expensive and very expensive to maintain as well. This option would also build up a lot of traffic for passenger cars and ships in the area. So we crossed this option out. We decided to build a pre-stressed, pre-cast concrete bridge because we knew it would be the least expensive to build and maintain. We also found that this option would be the fastest to construct of the three alternatives. We decided to model our bridge after the already existing Coronado Bridge. Uh, the reason for this being that when you look at the city of Coronado from a distance, it's uh, most appealing to see some sort of symmetry going on there. The North Island Naval Air Station main access route has been the cause of a significant number of citizen complaints. Their complaints stem from the large volume of military and civilian employee traffic that cuts through the heart of Coronado to access the base by way of the existing Coronado Bay Bridge and 3rd and 4th Street as their primary conduit. The existing Coronado Bridge will continue to serve the civilian community of Coronado, while the new North Island Bridge will be solely accessible by military personnel and civilian employees. Those that need to access North Island Naval Air Station on a routine basis will be required to take the new route in order to limit congestion in the city of Coronado. This will leave the Coronado Bridge and the streets of Coronado City freely accessible by citizens and tourists visiting the area. As part of our group's needs, the geotechnical aspects of this project had to be considered, things such as soil analysis and substructure design. The geotechnical soil analysis and the substructure design for our project was performed while keeping citizen safety and cost efficiency in mind. SPT boring data was used to get accurate subaqueous ground surface elevations and identify soil layer characteristics. CPT data provided me with cone tip resistance, sleeve friction, and pore water pressure values to aid in the bearing capacity calculations. Laboratory testing provided gradation curves, soil friction angles, cohesion values, and overconsolidation ratios as well. After closely working with the structural engineer, expected dead load, live load, and environmental loads, as well as maximum shear stresses and bending moments were determined. Bearing capacity analysis was performed to determine the sizing of the piles and the pile cap foundations, all using a factor safety of 3.0 between the ultimate and the allowable loads. Settlement of the substructure was evaluated by looking at the stress increases the soil layers would experience in the zone of influence created by the pile grouping. The compression susceptibility in those layers was determined, and an overall acceptable settlement value was found. Lateral substructure deflections were looked at using Evans and Duncan method for the piles while keeping in mind the pile soil to pile interaction or the shadow effect to see how the lateral load induced soil stresses from one pile would impact the neighboring piles in the grouping. Steel reinforcement of the foundation and the pile group was determined after interpreting AFSTO, Caltrans, and ACI specifications to minimize the deflections and to provide adequate resistance to the accelerations caused by seismic activity. An overall design profile was mapped over the existing soil layers of the site uh, after the substructure components were completed. Also, the empirical method approach for evaluating cyclic liquefaction potential due to seismic shaking was performed. And due to the dense condition of the saturated sand, liquefaction potential was not determined to be a significant concern. 
The first thing we had to do for our traffic design was the geometrical design of the bridge. And using a recommended design speed of 35 miles per hour for our bridge, the HDM suggests using no more than a max grade of 6% for level urban highways. Rhea and I decided that we would use this value for both grades of the bridge, bridge's vertical curve in order to meet a 200 foot clearance as soon as possible. Once we set our grades equal to 6%, we found that the length of the bridge would span 12,660 feet or 2.4 miles. By using Google Earth, we calculated the straight distance from the city of San Diego, North Island Naval Air Station, at our site to be approximately 4,500 feet. And according to HDM, the minimum recommended radius curve is about 425 feet for our design speed. Calculating the radius curve for our horizontal alignment, we found to be 2,841 feet with an angle of 261 degrees between both tangents. Looking at table 202.2 of the HDM, it recommends a super elevation rate of 0.04 for a two lane conventional highway with our calculated radius and spiral transition length of 150 feet. With a lot of research, planning, and scheduling, travel patterns, and volumes of traffic counts, we as a company decided that a new connection to San Diego to North Island will be needed. Planning the transportation model, drip generation, drip distribution, and route assignment on which streets and routes are being used to be able to determine the precise amount of travels entering North Island Naval Base. The collected data was analyzed under the Highway Capacity Manual to determine the design criteria. To establish a more efficient flow of traffic within the surrounding, within the surrounding area would give the military and civilian personnel an alternative path of entry and exit. With collected data was based on active duty and civilian employees in Coronado and North Island, in the year of 2010, an estimate annual traffic volume was 21,600,000 vehicles. The average daily northbound towards Coronado and southbound would be 30,000 vehicles with the bridge constructed to carry two traffic lanes with a speed limit of 35 miles per hour. The traffic analysis information given for the local traffic and intersection around the project area are provided by North Harbor Drive Project Traffic Study, Rose Intersight Guide, Rosecrans Study, Caltrans City of San Diego, and San Diego. The primary access point from the San Diego will be located at Nimitz Boulevard, and you can access it through from the Rosecrans Street and Laning Road. For this analysis, the majority of traffic is to use the security gate at the main access entry of the bridge, with the right turn to get back to the main road for anyone that's not able to access the bridge. The traffic volumes had been projected by the, ex by the existing year of 2009 from the, SDA, from the SDI master plan, assuming that the traffic grows at an average of annual growth of 1% per year. The analysis given is analyzed to be higher estimated traffic volume with the military and civilian personnel will be entering through different intersections around North Harbor Drive and Point Loma. So the bridge connection from North Island Naval Air Station will primarily be made of pre-stressed concrete and will be lined with stiffening planes. The columns will be spaced 200 feet apart and as stated in our traffic design, the bridge will have a clearance of 200 feet at the peak and span approximately 12,660 feet across the harbor. Along with Astra specifications, the curb to curb width of the bridge will be 30 feet. I use a recommended depth to span ratio of 0.04 and setting the span length to 200 feet, I calculate the depth of the cross section to be 8 feet. Since the depth and the radius of the column are the same, this will give us a 16 foot diameter for each column. The deck of the bridge will be 8 inches and the bridge will have type 25 Caltrans concrete barriers on each side in order to prevent cars from driving over the edge of the bridge. The bridge will have a 2 foot overhang on each side giving the bottom length to be 26 feet. The superstructure will be lined with rebar on the inside and the top of the superstructure will be lined with two rows of number 11 bars running parallel with the deck. Columns will be lined with 76 number 10 bars that will run as a spiral along the inside of each column. The bridge will use number 4 hoops at 12 inch spacings that run from the foundation through the column and into the superstructure. The inside of the structure will be lined with number 8 bars at 12 inches apart. The bridge's dead loads taken into consideration include the wiring surface, the deck, the stay in place forms, parapets, railings, bracings, connection plates, stiffeners, sidings, and utilities. Live loads that we designed for are type HS25 trucks, which is about 90,000 pounds per truck. This is a standard live load taken into consideration in California. I was primarily responsible with the surface hydrology and developing a hydraulic design. This would allow us to control the surface runoff on the pavement and into the inlets. 
The features included both a cross-section of the highway drainage and the removal of runoff. A hydrology analysis was carried out to establish the quantity of surface water. An estimated peak discharge using the rational formula and intensity of rainfall curves provided by the City of San Diego were used for all highway drainage calculations. Both the existing and proposed conditions of water surface profiles were considered in the design. The potential for stream and scour were also considered for future design purposes. The bridge deck design was intended to be the most cost-effective structure, providing an efficient removal of debris within pipes. This would also decrease the chances of a vehicle hydroplane on the road. It would produce a long-term maintenance of the bridge and limit the erosion on the bridge and end slopes. Proper grades and super elevations and cross slopes were designed, therefore water debris and will officially convey to the inlet and end collectors. Bridge deck designs with zero grades or slack vertical curves are poor hydraulic designs and can cause water problems. As well as its super elevation, transitioning through a zero grade can cause water problems. NGE has sufficiently worked together to define the scope and budget for this project. Necessary cost estimates have been performed for the various stages of project development. As the project progresses, the estimates will be refined to verify that the project is still cost effective, that sufficient funds are available for construction, and that the contractor's bid prices are reasonable. According to our schedule, our project's starting date will be January 1st, 2012, which means that if we're able to start on that date, we're able to finish our project by June 3rd, 2013. This will be a total of 520 calendar days and 384 working days. The proposed bridge will be approximately 12,660 feet or 2.4 miles long and it will consist of a multi-span structure with spans varying in length depending on the final design length of the bridge. There is a maximum distance of 600 feet between each span and the vertical elevations of each span would ascend from the point of line connection to bridge crest. The peak elevation at the bridge crest will be 200 feet and it will then descend until reaching ground the opposite end point of line connection. Ground elevations have been determined to be 10.2 feet on the city of San Diego side and 5.1 feet on the North Island side. The proposed superstructure spans for this alternative will rest on reinforced columns. The piles will be 400 millimeters in diameter and driven into the sand and silty sand layers of the San Diego Bay area up to lanes of 32.2 feet. The bridge contains two lanes, one northbound lane and one southbound lane. The north end of the bridge takes you to the Point Loma base from which Interstate 5 can be easily accessed. The south end of the bridge lies on North Island. The bridge is designed exclusively for active military personnel and civilian military personnel vehicle traffic. There are no pedestrian walkways, bike paths included in design. Following, there's a summary of our proposed project. Try to be like, oh, didn't catch you there. Walk in from the side. Oh, hello there. <laughs> I'm David. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Maybe I'm sick of this one. Yeah, We're get nuts get with it. Yeah, Alright, pick a spot and Should it's... Should I do that? Should I do that? Yeah, you should. I, Diego, I was here to stay. I found my <laughs> perfect city. No, the like greatest <laughs> city. The greatest city. The greatest city. That looks really good. This city is not only pretty, but like my best friend has so much to share. Surfing in the ocean, trolley locomotion, chargers, padres, astronauts.